Every word you say is true. Every word you say will come to pass. For you are not a man to lie to me. Or you are not a son of man to change. When you spoke a word, that word will come to pass. I thank you, Lord Jesus for everything you do for us, for your protection, for your grace. And thank you for you, what you have done on the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, please speak to us. Let your word transform our lives. Let your word show us the way to walk. Let your word enlighten our way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give us understanding to understand this word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Is your brother TK Venker. As you know, the other people call me brother theory. We are going to talk about how to receive the word of God. How to receive the word of God. Let go in the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 Matthew chapter 13 verse 19 the Bible says when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart this is he who received seed by the wayside. The Bible says, when anyone hears the word of God and does not understand it, the wicked one, the devil, come and snatch the word of God from the heart of that person. That is why that man will not understand the word of God. And that kind of person is the person who receive the word of God by the wayside. Hmm. I have to receive the word of God. When I was reading this uh, chapter, I was asking a lot of the question. I said to myself, why Satan can come to snatch only the word of God from the heart of someone? And I come to understand that Satan knows the importance of the word of God. Satan knows that everything we need. That is why Satan knows that the word of God. I take away the word of God from their heart. And when they do not understand the word of God, I will be able to use them. But if I let the word of God in their heart, when they understand the doubt, I will never be able to use them. And everything they need is in the word of God. So I need to take that word from their heart for them not to understand it for me to use them. Everything that we need is in the word of God. Because every blessing, everything that we need before it takes a body or before that to, to come to our hand is first spiritual and then it will become material and that transition from spiritual to material or to take a body is by the word God have to speak a word if you take I can give you some example for you to understand that better if you take a case of Noah in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7 the Bible says before Noah to build the ark God spoke a word God told Noah what kind of word what kind of things he need to take or to use to build the ark and God told Noah why you need to build the ark because I'm going to kill this evil generation it was a word. God spoke that. God was seeing that. And God spoke to Noah. And Noah saw that also in his spirit. And Noah applied that word to build the ark. 
and Noah applied that word before he applied, he understood the word. As God told him, he understood that. And that word was in his heart. And he applied the word to build the ark and to get into the ark. You see? So everything before he take a body, before he become material, is in the word of the spirit. Is a spiritual. And then that transition from the spiritual to the physical is spoken by a word. But when the word is spoken, that word must stay in your heart. And you must understand the word. And when you apply the word, the word was spiritual become material or physical. So you can see or touch it. And the second example, you can see the healing of the commander, Naama, in the book of the second Kings, chapter 5, verse 10 and verse 14. This commander was a sick, so he needed healing. So he went to see a prophet, a man of God, Elisha. He did not see Elisha face to face. But Elisha sent his servant, Geazi, and the servant came to Naama. The servant spoke the word the man of God told him to tell Naama. The servant says, that say the man of God, if you go, if you go to dip yourself seven times in the water, in the river, you will get clean, you will get healed, you will get better. It was a word spoken. In the first time, Naama did not understand the word. He did not want to do that. His servant spoke to him, begged him to uh, obey the word, to do as the man of God said. When he went to dip himself seven times in the water, he was healed. You see, it was a word. Healing was a word was a spiritual, was not there before him to apply. But after a word is spoken, he took the word and he understood the word, he put the word in his heart and he applied the word how? To go to the word and dip himself seven times. And then the word, the healing took a body, which means healing manifest in the body of the commander Nahama. If you take the case of Moses and the children of Israel, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 16, God spoke to Moses. God said to Moses, let me read that. Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Before the children of Israel go through the water and dry ground, God had to speak a word. God spoke a word, spoke to Moses, lift up your hand, your rod, and stretch your hand on the river, and the water will be divided. God spoke a word. Moses understood the word, keep the word in his heart, applied the word, so he, be, he took a body, he became reality. So the river was divided. So everything we need, miracle, healing, blessing, salvation, is in the spiritual realm already. But for that to come in the physical uh, realm, or for that to take body, it, it must be spoken. God must speak the word. So is it through the word of God? When the word is spoken, is in your heart. You keep that. You understand that. You apply that. Then it took a body. It manifested physically. That is why the devil, Satan, understand this. He says, if I let these people, if I let these people understand the word of God, if I let them keep the word of God in his, their heart and understand the world and apply the world, I will miss them. So I need to be there when the word of God is a preach for me to snatch the world from them, for them not to understand the world. Because if they do not understand the world, if the word of God is not in their heart, they will not understand that. And if they do not understand, they cannot apply 
which means I will use them. That is why you see a lot of people because of that. My man can be there, he can say himself, I've been a Christian 50 years, 80 years, 20 years, 5 years, I've been a Christian, I've been playing drums, I've been singing, I've been doing this 50 years for God. But if you check his life, the way he's talking, the way he's speaking, you're going to see like not a Christian, sometimes judging people, sometimes accusing people. God doesn't accuse people. Judging people is not our duty. God himself is the judge. But a Christian, when you see the way a Christian can talk, a man can talk, but he said himself 50 years I've been a Christian. 20 years I've been in church. There's no change. Why? The people do not understand the word of God. The word of God is not in their hearts. The devil is snatching the word of God from the heart of people for the people not to understand in order to apply the word of God. Therefore, there is no change. That's why Paul said, the apostle Paul said in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. <laughs> Let me read the Bible verse. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrew chapter 5, Hebrew chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, the word of God says this, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing, for though by this time you have to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principle of oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The people see the baby, 50 years, 20 years, 10 years of being a Christian, a baby. They don't grow because, and then they became dull of hearing because the word of God is not in their heart because Satan is stealing the word of God from their heart for them not to understand. Therefore, there's no change. There is no chain. A Christian was supposed to be a solution, but a Christian became a problem. The church was supposed to be a solution, but today the church became a problem. The Christian was supposed to be the solution, but they became again the problem. Why? Because the word is not in their heart. The devil snatched the word of God. They do not understand. Therefore, there is no change. You know, Change can be only if the word of God is in your heart. That is why if the word of God is not in your heart, your own heart can deceive you. Yes. If the word of God is not in your heart, your own heart can deceive you. If you read the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Listen what the Bible says. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The Bible says this. The heart is a deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I the Lord search the heart and test the mind even to give every man according to his way according to the fruit of his doing. The heart of man is a deceitful. So your own heart, who can know it? Who can know it? Meaning your own heart can be deceitful by yourself, you cannot know it. So your own heart can deceive you. Yes, your own heart can deceive you. Look at one man in the Bible, the man that his own heart deceived him. <laughs> if your own heart deceive you, you may not know the stage of your heart. It can deceive you. There is one man in the Bible that his own heart deceive him. Let's look at that man. Let's go in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. 
verse 7 to 8. We're going to see a man that his own heart deceived him. Matthew chapter 2. Your own heart can deceive you when there is not the word of God in your heart. Your own heart can deceive you. Matthew 2, 7. Then he wrote, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I might come and worship him also. That's Matthew chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. Now, let me read verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country in another way. Now, let me read verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed from for, for Egypt. And 15, and he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I call my son. 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its district, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. You see, Herod was deceived by his own heart. The wise men spoke to him about Jesus. The king of the Jews is born. And then Herod said, Oh, go, found the place that he is, found the address. When you found the address, please come back to me, tell me everything. The address, the city, and I will go there to worship him. But in his heart, he's planning to kill Jesus. But out of his mouth, is speaking to worship him but in his heart is planning to kill him so he was deceived in his own Even heart the wise men did not know the stage of the heart of Herod that is why we read in the book of Jeremiah 79 that the heart of man is deceitful who can know it God knew the heart of the king Herod that's why he told the wise men do not go back to Herod because he's planning to kill the child not to worship even though he's speaking to worship, but in his heart, he's planning to kill. Go another way. That is why when Herod went uh, way for them, when he did not see the wise man, he was mad. So he sent his soldier to kill all the child from two years old to under. You see, he was deceived by his own heart. Your own heart can deceive you when the word of God is not in your heart. So we do not have to put the word of God on our lips, but the word of God needs to abide in our hearts. But the thing is, the devil is stealing that from our heart for us not to understand. Because he knew if you keep the word of God, your life will change. If you keep the word of God in your heart, understand it and apply it, you cannot be like who you are now. There must be change. You must please God. You must honor God. You must follow God. You must serve God. No one will push you. The Word Himself will reveal to you who you are in Christ Jesus and why you have to serve God and why you have to obey God and how. But if the Word of God is not there in your heart, your own heart will deceive you if the Word of God is not in your heart. That is why how to know how to discover the stage of your heart. This sign will help you and I to discover the stage of our heart. Let's go in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to 23. The Bible says this. And he said, What comes out of a man that defies a man? For whom we think out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, death, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, 
foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defies a man. If you found one of these a sign out of your heart, that means your the stage of your heart is not God. Why? Because the word of God is not there. That is why you need a clean heart. You need to clean your heart. How? Oh, there was a man in the Bible, David, in the book of Psalm 51, 10, asked God to clean his heart, to purify his heart. That's why you need to do now. Understand that God said, if you ask, I will give to you. This is a good prayer that God will need to hear from you and from me to clean our heart, to give us a new heart, to create in us a new heart, a heart that can keep the word of God, a heart that can understand the word of God, a heart that can apply the word of God. Because the word of God is all that you need. Let's pray. This is the introduction of this message or exhortation. We will continue about this theme, how to receive the word of God. Let's pray that God clean your heart, give you a new heart, create in you a new heart, clean your heart, and God help you to keep the word of God in your heart and to apply the word of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I give you all the praise for this message. We need to keep the word of God in our heart, to understand the word of God and to apply the word of God. That is why, first of all, we prayed that you clean our heart, purify our heart with the blood of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord Jesus, and create in us a new heart. Create in us a new heart, Lord, because we need to keep your word in our heart and then we're going to understand and apply your word for us to please you. Because we need to change. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Lord, I bless you for this word. Bless everyone that watch this message. Bless every house that receive us. Bless every device that receive us, that receive your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Protect us everywhere we are for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. See you in the next time.